sound speeds. And if you've ever done any kind of field recording, then you probably run into a circumstance where your actors or talent are too far away from your microphone. And you wish that you could just boost it up in post, but the background noise is up too high. So what can you do? Well, believe it or not, there's a couple of little things you can try that will most likely give you some decent, if not great results. The technique I'm about to show you can be done in any digital audio workstation software, including Audacity, which is open source. Therefore, you can use it for free. So you really have no excuse for not at least trying this technique if you feel that you have a need to. I'll put a link to Audacity in the description, along with the link to Reaper, which is the DAW I'm about to use for this demonstration. Now, let's go ahead and dive right in. The audio clip that we're going to be listening to is from a recent video I did on how to rain protect certain gear. And this was the outro to that video. You'll notice there's a heavy amount of noise floor and I sound very loose on the microphone. That is far away from the microphone. I did that intentionally and you'll realize why in another video. But for right now, let's go ahead and start by listening to this audio clip just enough to give you an idea of what we're dealing with. Hear the heavy amount of noise floor? So there you have it. My Hear how distant I sound? So there you have it. Protecting your stutters and everything. So there you have it. Protecting your precious gear against spills and even comp You get the idea. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this exact audio clip and I'm going to insert a new track and then paste it. I'm doing all this manually so that way you understand. And I'm going to slide everything to the left. Now, if I were to just drop the little timeline right on top of any particular place in time, like that peak right there, that crest, you can tell that they're perfectly in aligned alignment because it's the exact same audio clip. I'm not going to normalize them. I'm not going to raise the volume or do anything. But what I will do is I will turn on just for making it easier for this video. I will turn on a volume envelope for both of these audio clips, but that's not necessary. It's an added little step I'm going to do. Now I have effects enabled, but there's nothing you know, ticked there. So if you notice, there's absolutely nothing running. And I'm going to change that by soloing the second audio track and selecting the ambience portion, which is just the background noise. Hear that? That's all it is, is just the background noise. Actually, I did, I sampled, uh, I, I have both of them soloed. So now it's just the background noise of one track. And I'm going to go and create what's called a noise profile. That's if you want to completely eliminate the background noise or at least reduce it. And in Reaper, that technique is uh, using a an effect called Refer. And if I go ahead and, and restore it back to factory specs, you get into it by going to Mode Subtract right here. As long as it is looping, which is what it's doing right here, looping this one audio section, which is just my ambience, and I'm not shifting, I'm not clicking, or not changing around the settings. It's just ambience, background noise, and it's very constant, so it should be okay. If I play this now, and I hit this little button right here to start building a noise profile, hear how it kind of modulates as it finds all the little background noise elements to it. I'm going to now untick this box so it stops creating a noise profile of whatever it's playing. And let's just listen to my audio. Precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water. Doesn't sound very good, does it? Well, that's okay. Stay with it for a second because we're going to go a little bit deeper here. Now I'm going to uncheck the solo box right there. Now let's listen to the two of them together. Precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water. I don't have the most manly voice. It's very, very high pitched, right? And it doesn't help that I'm pretty distant. But notice that the modulation stuff was lost uh, quite a bit in the noise flow profile. You heard the, back, uh, the, the background noise, I should say. You still heard a little bit of it if you're really listening to it with headphones, but it's kind of lost in the background noise because the two clips are playing on top of themselves. Now, if you watch my video on adding decibels, which you can watch right there, you know that if you have two identical sounds and you add the two of them together, it increases your volume by 6 dB. That's one of the reasons why I did not want to increase the audio here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower both of them the exact same amount. Let's just lower them, let's say 3 dB, uh, roughly. Let's just call it right around here. Actually, I didn't even need to do that to the second audio clip. But now it's both they've both been reduced about 3 dB. And if I play it... So there you have it. Protecting your precious gear against spill... I want you to notice something, though. If I just adjust the audio of the background zeroed out version of it, which is this second one here, listen to what happens if I just play that one clip and start adjusting the volume up on the fly. So there you have it. Protecting your precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water in a very form-fitting manner. So thank you for... It starts to sound a little bit more present, doesn't it? Now, let me ask you this also. If I want 
to speak farther away from a microphone, what characteristics are lost on my voice? Usually bass, right? Usually the closer I get to a microphone, the more proximity effect I have. The closer I am, the more bass is going to come out in my voice. Therefore, if you want to add a little bit of equalization now to just this, this audio right down here, which I'll go ahead and, and set a, a basic 11 band EQ up and we'll play around with it just a little bit and see what we can do. And I'm not going to get into the whole equalization thing. I'm going to be kind of loose and make a bunch of adjustments to at least show you how it will affect the sound. But listen to how it affects if you leave the stock, the bare bones, basic background noise and everything, leave that alone. And all the changes that you're making just do to your background removed version, which is even a little bit higher in volume at this time, which is actually 6 dB over the background noise. Let's listen to what happens. So there you have it, protecting your precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water in a very form fitting habit. Protecting your precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water in a very form fitting habit. Protecting your precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water in a very form fitting habit. Protecting your precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water in a very form fitting habit. Protect so you can hear it fattened up quite a bit and I haven't even really dialed it in or even done a proper technique to really, I mean, I could, but that's another video. But you hear how it did fatten up the sound quite a bit and seem to almost bring it closer by at least a, few, a couple of feet simply by removing the background noise of one of the files and then adjusting the EQ of that. So you can do the exact same thing on your audio clips and probably get some pretty decent results. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go very aggressive here for a second. I'm going to lower this background noise from the uh, original untouched one quite a bit just to at least see what happens to the audio clip that I've already adjusted and see what it does and at what point you really start to hear all that modulation. So there you have it, protecting your precious gear against spills and even complete submerges in water in a very form fitting habit, protecting your precious gear against spills and even I, I hear the modulation. I mean, it's it's been there the whole time, but you could really hear it when you drop a few, you know, like this is 12 dB under, which is a quarter of the volume. So you can really start to hear it at that point. But it's kind of a cool technique, isn't it? Completely eliminating the background noise and then EQing the background noise track that is removed. So there you have it, a very simple and easy technique you can use to try to restore your audio if you recorded in an environment with a heavy amount of background noise or your talent was too far off the microphone, or maybe even both. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Sound Speech, and be sure to tune in, in the future for more interesting techniques, whether in post or in sound in general and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.